Hello, welcome back. This is video number three, and we're going to talk about your end goal, or in other words, your objective. So how your funnel will look like really depends on this piece of the puzzle, because if you're trying to generate leads or you're trying to generate sales, that really can differentiate. So in other words, if you don't know your objective, then your funnel really won't convert well. Now, in terms of this survey strategy, it really is determined by what you're trying to achieve. You can start by answering this question, are you trying to sell a product or a service? Or are you merely trying to generate leads? So perhaps you want to do your market research right so that you can understand the multiple reasons why somebody would use your product and your service. Now you can ask people to take a survey and choose from a list of reasons. You can even tailor the autoresponder series or even sales video that you send them to and send them to a specific video that will cater to them. So this will make more sense in just a minute if it is a little bit confusing. So this is so crucial because this empowers you to literally speak to a person's needs and by doing so, you will get higher conversions. So in other words, what I'm talking about here is, let's say you take initial survey and you find out there are three main reasons why somebody buys your product and service. So you take those three main reasons, you create a different survey or a quiz, whatever, and you have them go through them. And if they choose one of those three reasons, then you send them to a different location. Does that make sense? So let's say, for example, they have choices one, two, and three. If they choose number one, they get sent to a different email autoresponder and a different video sales letter that talks about that specific need. And let's say, for example, that they choose number three, then they get sent to a totally different sales letter or sales video and a different email autoresponder series that is tailored to that specific need. So hopefully that makes a little bit more sense, but we're going to give you practical examples so that it definitely makes more sense. So for example, if you were to sell a security product, you could be selling to a father, a single woman, or an elderly couple. Now, if you approach the situation generically, you would usually sell it as a security product to promote one's family. Now, as this example is going to show you why, if you're going to speak to all three of those types of people the same way, it's actually going to not be as impactful. So believe it or not, these three types of people would have completely, completely different needs. For example, the father is going to be concerned about his family, whereas the single woman, she doesn't really have a family. It's just her. She might have some pets or dogs or cats or bunnies or whatever. But the single woman may be concerned about her safety and her pet's safety. Then you have the elderly couple who have totally different needs as well. Now, by speaking to them, as if they were individuals, thoughtfully considering that each of them have very specific needs, your conversion rate will skyrocket, right? Because if you're talking to the father, you're saying, hey, if you're a father, blah, 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 or hey, if you're a single woman, or hey, if you're an elderly couple, they're gonna resonate with that, right? So are you trying to qualify a lead before they are approved into your service? Because when it comes to offering a service, you want to figure out if the prospect is the best fit for you and vice versa. That's why I ask you, are you trying to sell a product or a service? Because they can be slightly different as you'll see in just a minute. So having run services before, it becomes much of a headache if you attract the wrong customer base. So that's why you, in, in certain respects, you need to qualify them based on your data. So the only way that you can avoid that is by understanding different customers and understanding how different questions can essentially bring in good clients and disqualify the bad clients. So at the end of the day, you don't want to take every single client, especially for if you offer a service, right? You want to find the client that is going to see your value. They're going to pay the money and they're gonna leave you alone because they know that you're the expert versus the other client who might pay you the same amount of money, but they're going to be on your doorstep every single day asking you to change this, to change that, 
And it's just going to eat up so much time that you won't be able to spend time with your other clients. So that's why you don't want to take everybody, right? So the reason being is some clients are just nightmare situations. You know, we've had clients before where we offer services and what should have taken a week ended up taking a whole four months. And then we have other clients on the other hand that it should have taken a month and it was really done within a few weeks and the client was super happy. So hindsight 2020, you look at it and you think, I would rather have the second client. So hopefully this gives you an idea of what your objective will look like if you can jot down what would look like for you before you even move on to the next video, that will actually help you devise a great strategy. So let's move on to video number four.